It is a strategy researchers have been talking about for years, and now some police departments are all in. Good evening, everyone. The flashpoint in Ferguson began a national debate about policing in America. But the conversation started years ago in Cincinnati. Local 12's Deborah Dixon shows us how lessons learned here are helping shape the future of policing. No justice, no peace. The chokehold death in New York, the police killing of an unarmed black teen in Ferguson, and a 12-year-old with a toy gun in Cleveland have protesters across the country demanding police and judicial reform. After a grand jury refused to indict the officer who put a chokehold on Eric Garner, New York's mayor promised to retrain officers with new techniques on how to deal with the public. It sounds like procedural justice. We have now clear evidence that demonstrates that citizens, when they believe that they're being treated in a procedurally just and a fair way, that they're more likely to comply and they're more likely to cooperate with law enforcement. That is clear. Dr. Robin Engels, director of UC's Institute of Crime Science. She's one of many researchers writing and talking about procedural justice that has to do with fairness. Procedural justice is really pretty simple. Research shows people care more about how they're treated by police, respectfully or fairly, than the outcome of their contact with cops, whether they get arrested or ticketed. Is a police department that reduces crime effective? Many would say yes. I would suggest that a police department that reduces crime and makes citizens feel that they're part of the process, has legitimacy and transparency in their police department, that's an effective police department. Chicago police already started training in procedural justice. It includes taking a closer look at implicit bias. Research shows some people subconsciously act on racial stereotypes without realizing it. The training has police and community leaders talking honestly about why they don't trust each other. Talking. That happened here after the deadly police shooting of an unarmed black teen in 2001 that set off four days of rioting. Um, in Cincinnati, we've already started that. Cincinnati does have a head start. Dr. Engel would like to see the department lead the way. If we can formalize this into some type of training that benefits us, I'm sure that that's something that our police department would love to be a leader in. Some police departments are going to be taught what Cincinnati has already learned the hard way. Deborah Dixon, Local 12 News. Procedural justice is big on targeted deterrence. That's working with the community to target known criminals in a neighborhood, which is exactly how Cincinnati's initiative to reduce violence works. Cities all over the country now use Cincinnati's program as a model. 